This video is now in session, and the Supreme Court is going to decide a lot of cases in the couple of weeks to come. Usually, the Supreme Court releases all of its major cases, or at least the most uh, consequential cases, during the end of its term, which is usually at the end of June or even into early July, if there are a lot of cases. So, there are four big cases this uh, this season, this term, uh, when it ends uh, um, late June. <laughs> and the thing is, uh, usually these cases are released a lot earlier than it is. Um, like, at least there should be around two cases that have already been released. There's only really one case that has been released, and it's not even related or like, uh, or like one major case that's released and it's not related to any of these cases. It's mainly related to immigration, where the Supreme Court ruled that having um, that having TPS does not mean you can apply uh, in, for a green card uh, directly in the United States. Um, and that was a 9-0 decision. But these four cases, these four cases have not been released yet, and they are pretty major. So... Um, there are three questions. Uh, the New York Times lays it out here, but there are also additional questions. Uh, so there are three questions. Are how is Amy Coney Barrett going to vote? Uh, how about Brett Kavanaugh? And then if there are going to be any surprises this month? Um, another question, though, is also how is uh, Chief Justice Judge Roberts um, shaping the Supreme Court with a 6-3 uh, textualist slash originalist majority? Um, because he obviously wants to be, uh, he obviously wants to bring balance to the court. He seems like a real doctrinalist, but uh, he, at the same time, it, it, it is going to be interesting to see how he commands this new ship, um, especially since even with him, he's no longer part, part of the majority by voting with the future constitutionalists. So... Uh, if he continues to stay as a doctrinalist, we'll just have to see. Uh, so the first case we have is Obamacare. So it's California v. Texas. In this case, uh, I think that is this is there an oyez of this? No. Um, so for California v. Texas, uh, this case mainly centers around Obamacare and uh, Texas, the Attorney General of Texas, Ken Paxton, uh, said that because the individual mandate is zero dollars, the uh, as in if you do not um, buy, if you do not have uh, health care, then you have to pay zero dollars. It used to be a tax of uh, multiple dollars until that was ruled unconstitutional. Um, but uh, what Texas is arguing is that because it's zero dollars, that is unconstitutional. The entire individual mandate is unconstitutional. And uh, as a result, because that one clause is unconstitutional, that makes the entire bill, the entire Affordable Care Act, invalid. Um, and that, those are the two main questions being argued. Uh, now, it's most likely going to be said that the individual mandate, which is zero dollars, is unconstitutional. But they are also going to, uh, the Supreme Court is likely to argue at the uh, same time that it is severable from the rest of the act, meaning that uh, just because that part is unconstitutional doesn't mean the entire thing is unconstitutional. And that's important because a lot of people rely on the affordable health care currently. And uh, if it were to be, unconstitutional that would be a big change uh, from Supreme Court decisions uh, narrowly protecting Obamacare now the reason why this is happening there needs to be a total of two textualist slash originalist justices and Judge Roberts seems like an obvious choice but the other choice is uh, the other not the other option I, I guess yeah the other option is Brett Kavanaugh Brett Kavanaugh and Judge Roberts both hinted that they would vote in favor of California in this case uh, in terms of their questioning and as well as their tone uh, between the two sides during uh, legal arguments, which is why it's likely that Obamacare will survive for another day. But voting rights may not. In this case, Bonovich versus the Democratic National Committee centers around uh, uh, centers around um, the, uh, the, the the discarding of ballots uh, if they are 
uh, cast at the Ron Prison, and as well as Ballot Harvesting, uh, which means that you're, uh, which means that you're sending a lot of ballots to different polling places, uh, which Arizona made a crime. So those are the two things that, uh, but uh, that, um. Uh, the Democratic National Committee is challenging uh, against Bonovich, uh, who is the Attorney General of Arizona, and and these laws here, um, they're likely to they're likely to go uh, they're likely to be upheld uh, by the Supreme Court um, because of states' rights and because of uh, the power that the states have. Um, and it's also as somewhat reasonable clauses, even if liberals might not think so. Uh, so it's likely that we'll see a 5-4 majority for Mark Bonovich of uh, Arizona. Um, Judge Roberts, uh, he might uh, side with the future constitutionalist judges, uh, but um, even with him siding, it doesn't make a difference because Amy Coney Barrett is in the uh, is in the is the newest member instead of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The third case centers around religion and as well as gay rights. So this is about same-sex couples deserving the same protection against discrimination uh, as uh, racial minorities um, in terms of uh, the church. Uh, and if the church ha has to follow those policies or if the church can um, or if the church can uh, can go against those rules of uh, anti-discrimination rules and say that um, you can marry uh, you can only marry uh, a person of the opposite sex in order to be in the group and that is the main question in being at hand which is that does anti-discrimination uh, does um, discrimination on the basis of sex go above religion or does religion go above disc uh, discrimination of sex and that's a very hard question to answer because both points have the uh, they're both valid points um you have the right to religion and uh it's a burden if you have to start accepting people that might not conform to your definition of uh, your um perspective on religion uh but at the same time um, it's been incredibly anti-discriminatory for same-sex couples, and uh, this is a question that the justices will have to answer. Um, now, it seems like Fulton uh, has an upper hand compared to the city of Philadelphia, primarily because uh, there is a 6-3 textualist originalist majority, um, but there could be a surprise from either Brett Kavanaugh or even... Um, I wouldn't say Neil Gorsuch, but uh, I mean, uh, okay, Samuel Alito, uh, 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 Justice Thomas, Clarence Thomas, uh, um, and then Justice Barrett, they're all most likely going to vote for, uh, they're most likely going to vote for the Fulton. Meanwhile, um, uh, meanwhile, Kavanaugh, as well as Gorsuch, could be the dark horse in this ruling, but we'll have to see. Um, there's a potential for the city of Philadelphia to win, but it's still in Fulton's favor. Uh, it's still in the church's favor. And then finally, we have a school speech case, whether um, a 14-year-old should be allowed to say uh, the F word and allowed to slander a cheerleading group, I believe, uh, because uh, she did not make it for her... Uh, I'm not sure if it was cheerleading, but she did not make one of her uh, one of the junior varsity teams in her high school, and as a result, she went on Snapchat and um, started saying the F word and other things. And then the school district said that no, you can't do that. We're gonna place you in suspension. You are not demonstrating the uh, you're not demonstrating, I guess, uh, the pride of the school, and you're not properly demonstrating. Uh, what it is to be a high schooler from that district, and uh, obviously punishment is um has been allowed before by the Supreme Court, as in like school districts. Um, the Supreme Court has ruled that they are somewhat like parents that the in that because they're parents, uh, because um your actual parents are not with you, and instead the teachers in a school district, as well as the superintendents and all the other faculties or teachers, then as a result, the school district has the right to do stuff that 
um, maybe no that maybe no one else has um, like um, like uh, they're able to do things that police members can't do like probable cause if there's probable cause then um, uh, or reasonable suspicion then you can uh, search a student's locker but in this case in this case it seems like the school district has gone too far with uh, free speech uh, because there because uh, the overall argument they're making is that um, it doesn't represent that the uh, Snapchat post doesn't represent the school's sentiments. But if that really was, I mean, if the Supreme Court really ruled in favor of the school district, then I uh, then uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of children would be suspended already. Um, myself included. Uh, I I'm not I, did, I never slandered my high school by the way, but um, but uh. <laughs> But I have so, uh, but you know, everyone says some very stupid things when they're in high school, and some very inept things. So, um, it seems likely that the justices are going to rule fa in favor of Brandy Levy, uh, who is the fourteen-year-old. Um, now it will most likely be a six-three or a seven-two decision, uh, just because. This is a case that is really just, uh, if the school district actually wins this case, it's going to be pretty bad for children to the point where they probably will create a national crisis. Um, if, all, if school districts are allowed to suspend children just for saying the F word uh, and relating that to their school. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be, it's almost definitely not going to be going for Mahoney Area School District. So those are the four main cases that have been um, argued. And as we mentioned before, the uh, as we mentioned before, they've already the, the Supreme Court has already decided a case relating to immigration, whether you can use um, the TPS status, which I believe means um, yeah, the TPS status, which is pretty much a, a program that allows uh, those fleeing from uh, disaster. Um, uh, uh, fleeing from disaster to be uh, able to settle into the United States for some amount of time, the temporary protected status, and an, a, a, a not a family, um, a couple used the TPS to uh, migrate from Central America to the United States because of a disaster there in um, the early 2000s, and then they tried to apply for a green card, and they said that they had the right to apply for a green card even though they were part of the TPS and the Supreme Court ruled no, you do not have the right to um, uh, to uh, get a green card because of TPS. It has to be another reason. TPS is temporary and is not um, an actual legitimate reason to get a green card or to be eligible for a green card. So those are the five cases that the Supreme Court has argued. Now next term, next term from 2021 to 2022 is going to be the major term. That's when gun um, rights are argued, that's when abortion rights are argued, and that's when a slew of other cases are going to be argued. Um, this year, even though it was pretty big, it's kind of muted uh, compared to next year. Next year, is a lot of these cases are happening that are that have not been argued for a long time. Like gun rights have not been argued since around 2010, so it's been a very long time. Um, now those uh, and now there will be around two gun cases that are happening in in the next term. And the thing is, it's happening right as the election is happening because 2021 or the end of 2021 is when primaries are starting to happen. It's when people are starting to figure out who they want as their nominee. And uh, that means that a lot of these Supreme Court cases that are being fought are going to be pretty important for whatever pundits and as well as politicians say in the um, in the Supreme Court in the next term because the, many of those cases will be decided by next year, so exactly one year from now, so uh, June of 2022, and that's when campaigns are really ramping up and that's when campaigns are really starting to uh, to build funds, to build uh, infrastructure for their voting push. So that's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. This video is now adjourned, and I'll see you in the next one.